Good day, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Uh, today, I wanted to conduct another video on the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine and uh, try to give explanation for uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the YouTube videos that have been uh, being shown and, and other uh, reported uh, uh, video documentation of uh, what can only be defined as very accurate Ukrainian artillery fire. And in a lot of these, uh, these videos that are out, uh, you see uh, that uh, the Ukrainians are using uh, some sort of artillery uh, to, in some cases, hit tanks uh, directly uh, with a 152 uh, millimeter uh, artillery round. Some people have uh, believed that these were, were possibly uh, actually uh, 155 millimeter Excalibur rounds, but that is uh, not the case. That's not to say that it's possible that the Excalibur has been deployed, but uh, even in, earlier in the conflict, uh, up no towards north, towards uh, uh, north of Kiev, and in, in other places before uh, there was talk of delivering uh, the uh, the Excalibur and those 155 millimeter uh, howitzers, uh, we had had seen some very very accurate uh, Ukrainian artillery strikes on Russian targets. And at the same time, we've also seen uh, the Russians uh, very accurately striking Ukrainian targets. So what is that? What system, uh, artillery system, is allowing the Ukrainians to uh, and, the, and the Russians uh, to strike targets of the opposing forces very, very accurately, at times putting steel on steel, hitting tanks and armored fighting vehicles with one, uh, one artillery shot round. And, uh, and both sides are using a, uh, a laser-guided system. The, Rus the Russians are using something known as the Krasnopol, and uh, the Ukrainians are using something known as the uh, Vetnik. And the Vetnik is... Uh, a, a more enhanced design of the Krasnopol. Uh, I, I do know and am aware that uh, as the as the conflict uh, has been ongoing and in previous uh, uses of the Russian Krasnopol as well, uh, there had been some inherent issues with uh, moisture and water uh, getting into the system and causing the system to malfunction. And that was one of the drawbacks uh, that we have seen uh, from the Krasnopol on the Russian end of the spectrum. Now that's not to say that all these, these rounds are contaminated. You just have to you just have to protect them a little more than you, you would some, some other systems and make sure that, that they're, they're not hit with a lot of water where they become uh, possibly uh, battlefield ineffective. The Ukrainians have uh, developed, they, they've also used the Krasnopol, but they have since uh, converted over and were producing the Vetnik, uh, their version of the 152 millimeter laser guided artillery round that uh, in a lot of these videos where you see uh, a precise artillery strike uh, and, and you usually see this from a drone and a lot of times the drones are in fact uh, providing some sort of laser guidance or spot guidance uh, to that uh, uh, to that artillery shell, it's that is possible. Uh, usually, uh, the there is a ground-based laser designator that a forward operator uh, lays it, lay, lases and designates said target. And uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like, so uh, let's say that there's a, a, a 152 millimeter uh, artillery piece located someplace, maybe in this area. And then, and then deployed forward, uh, you may have like an operator, a Ukrainian operator with this, with this laser designator who can then uh, identify, let's say, a, a Russian tank. We'll say pretend this is a Russian vehicle, but uh, the uh, Ukrainian uh, soldier is able to uh, put the spot designator on that target and then radios back and uh, they, they, the Ukrainians fire that uh, uh, artillery shell, that Vetnik, and it usually will hit very, very precisely with, uh, with one shot uh, as that target is illuminated by that uh, individual on the ground, uh, maybe hiding someplace in a line of trees or in a building. And uh, it, it uh, is a very effective system, and we can see that it is uh, being used to uh, some degree or a great degree of uh, accuracy uh, within the confines of uh, this conflict. And the Russians are, are using very similar systems with the uh, Krasnopol uh, as, as well. 
Now, we, we do believe some of these facilities uh, have been uh, destroyed, the production facilities that the Ukrainians uh, had prior to the conflict to uh, produce these, uh, these, these Vetniks, and uh, they have quite possibly since been destroyed. Now, uh, obviously, they have produced a number of them, and they are actively and have been actively been used through the con conflict. So how many do the Ukrainians have at this point? Uh, it's, it's probably unknown. Do they still have the, prop, the, the possibility to, uh, to produce these, uh, these, these fairly advanced systems? And I would say uh, probably not at this point. I would assume that the Russians have hit these facilities and have made it difficult for the Ukrainians to uh, produce. Now, that's not to say they still don't have them, possess them, and are still using them in certain amount of uh, stockpiles. And the Russians continue to use the Krasnopol as well to a... Uh, to a, a, a great degree of effectiveness. Now, obviously, there had been some issues with uh, some of the, uh, uh, as I just talked about earlier, some of the, the water getting into these rounds and causing them to malfunction. Uh, but uh, you, you keep them dry, and they, they usually tend to uh, work on the uh, on the Russian uh, end of the of the spectrum as well. So, just wanted to clarify that. Talk about these laser guided munitions that both the Russians uh, and the Ukrainians are currently. Uh, are currently using, and uh, we anticipate that we'll see uh, a, a further use of the 155 uh, Excalibur uh, that will, that has a much more extended range than uh, than some of these uh, both Ukrainian and Russian systems, and in, in all probability, uh, will be uh, much more precise, and uh, and uh, probably cause the Russians some grief once they. Uh, start being uh, used by the uh, Ukrainians in mass if the Russians don't have the ability uh, to destroy them as they uh, as they come into the country which is which is also a uh, a probability as well. Uh, that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us.